بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد All praise to Allah جل جلاله who has given us iman effort needs to be made to perfect this iman and get the equation of akhirat correct some people are very particular about their baking they make sure the cake is 360 degrees perfectly rounded from all angles some people are worried about their house they make sure it's clean and it's spick and span spotless the curtains are neat and tidy the samosas have perfect angles perfect 45 degree angles a perfect triangle a marksman wants to hit the bullseye the hunter wants to hit the target are we checking ourselves for deen and my performance in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala am I getting it right am I going to the scholars am I studying kitabs in my free time am I trying to understand and read tafasir of Quran afala yatadabbaroon al-Quran to ponder on the Quran ponder about the greatness of Allah go out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Every action will be weighty on the day of Qiyamah. We've got one life and we need to perfect it now while we have a chance and opportunity. There was a woodcutter who was looking for a job. He was good at it and he fulfilled the criteria. So he was given an axe and in the first day he cut 18 trees. So the owner was quite pleased. He said, congratulations. Keep up the good work. He was motivated. The next day he did the same task but 15 trees. Third day he tried harder only 10 trees. Day after day as he continued the quantity decreased. Eventually he could only bring one tree per day. So he thought so maybe I'm losing strength. Maybe I'm getting old. Maybe I've lost the skill and the art. So he went to his boss and apologized and he said that he could not understand what was happening so the boss asked him when was the last time you sharpened your axe when was the last time you sharpened your axe he said i had no time to sharpen my axe i was very busy trying to cut the trees like that also it should not be that we needed to sharpen our tilawat of quran we need to sharpen our dhikr we need to sharpen our salah, we need to sharpen our eyes that it's gaze at the correct things. We need to sharpen our tongues speaking about the greatness of Allah, making tilawat of Quran, engage in dua. But we are to engage in amassing wealth and merrymaking and enjoyment and the pleasures of this world. We've sharpened everything else. But we haven't sharpened our akhirah. Surah Al-Fatiha we read in every day. So, وَلَدْضَالِينَ وَتَضَادِ So that means those that are astray. A person reads وَتَضَادِ وَلَدْضَالِينَ Dhil is shade. So completely from astray to shade. The person reads وَتَضَالِ وَلَدْضَالِينَ Then Dhalil does graced. And wala zalin wata za those that slip. So one ayah of the Quran, but we can have different meanings. A person reads with the dal wala dalin tala to indicate to show. There can be four other meanings, but the correct one is wata dhad. So ulamas. That spend time getting the Dod right, spend three months, six months, sometimes one year, two years, just getting the Dod right. So how much time have we, if we cannot just get the words of the Quran, then when will we get the ma'ani, the meaning, the mafhum, and the actions? So deen is for me, it's for nobody else. And the responsibilities, responsibilities to see the deen of Allah come alive in the entire mankind till the day of Qiyamah, it is on my shoulders, it is my responsibility. Every person that is making effort on earth is assisting me, they are just my aid. But it is my responsibility. There was a short story of four people 
One was called everybody. Somebody else was called, his name was somebody. The third, anybody. And the fourth, nobody. So there was an important task, job to be done. What was the job? To learn, to practice, and to propagate Dean. That was their task. So everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought that anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. So this responsibility should be overwhelming on our shoulders. One of them is to get the tilawat of Quran right, to make the intentions of taqwa. And we were busy with the benefits of taqwa, but just understanding taqwa, as Abdullah ibn Masood used to say, Ittaqullah haqqa tuqati on this ayah, ayyu ta' fala ya'as. Obey Allah, don't disobey. We are ever to obey Allah 100%. And we will try our utmost best not to displease Allah. وَيَذْكُرْ فَلَا يَنْسَى And to be engaged in the dhikr of Allah all the time and not to forget Allah, to be negligent and ghafil. Now a person is reading salah, he does not even have awareness of the salah, sometimes even the rakats. A person was reading salah once, uh, Imam Sab forgot the amount of rakats of salah in, in the masjid. Half the majma said three, half said four, it was Salat al-Isha. One person stood up said, Imam Sahib, I'm sure definitely how much rakats you read. Why are you so sure? He said, every day in Isha Salah, I do hisab kitab of my four businesses, my shops. Today I did the hisab, how much profits I made in the first three businesses. The last one was outstanding. So that's why we read only three rakats, na'udhu billah. وَيَشْكُلْ فَرَا يَكْفُرْ That to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not disobey Allah and be ungrateful. Uh, Sufyan Thawri rahimullah you say إِنَّمَا سَمَوْ مُتَّقِينَ لِأَنَّهُمْ إِتَّقَوْ مَا لَا يَتَّقِي That a person is called a muttaqi because he abstains and he is scrupulous in particular what everybody else is not particular about. What everybody else is not particular about. So, I'm particular about the crease on my kurta. If the, the clothing burns, then I hold a grudge and I'm upset. A glass in the house breaks, I've got a problem. We are particular about dunya things and the shortfalls. Am I particular about deen? Umar bin Abdul Aziz used to say, لَيْسَ تَقْوَ اللَّهَ بِسْيَامِ النَّهَارُ وَلَا بِقِيَامِ اللَّيْلِ That just fasting the entire day, making ibadah the entire night is not only concerning taqwa. That person is not a muttaqi. But, وَلَكِنْ تَقْوَ اللَّهَ تَرْكُ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهَ What Allah has made haram to stay far away from that. وَأَدَاءَ مَا افْتَرَضَ اللَّهَ and what Allah has made compulsory to fulfill that. فَمَنْ رُزِقَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ إِلَىٰ خَيْرٍ That a person who has been given more than that means the least level is a person must be fulfilling every command of Allah. We need to check our register. And the register of staying away from haram. Have I perpetrated any sin? It is the time, it is the moment of Qabulia where Tawbah is accepted, Rahma, Maghfira, Mubarak times where a person can get their forgiveness. We need to seek those times and utilize it properly. So we may think they are small, but they are big. A person goes into the bank, the attendant, are we staring, gazing? Akim Akhtar used to say, even the oncoming cars, normally people look on the oncoming cars and the drivers are ladies, the passengers are lazy, so we recklessly eyeball in, be cautious on the flights, the air hostesses, are we, are we secretly gazing from the corner of our eyes, 
person sees somebody on the road, miss them on the rear view mirrors. Are we catching up gazers? So the person who's dressed up is also looking for head spinners. They, they're looking for the heads to spin in their direction. Be the one that spins and makes a revolution in the Asman. Not that we spin for the arrows of shaitan. Any bliss, one gaze may be the last gaze of our life. Where it will drop a person, it's a knockout punch from Iblis. Yahya ibn Mu'az rahimahullah used to say, Ijtinabu sayyad ashaddu min kasbil hasanat. More important, doing good deeds is very important, but a priority would be staying away from guna. Because that guna will drown a person. One gaze, one evil will result in another evil. That one chat, one, that one swipe, that one message, that one uh, music, that one song, that one girl, that one thing will destroy our Akhirah and it is not worth it. Amongst the benefits of Taqwa number 12 is Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha wa qoolu qawlan sadeeda Say, speak good things, speak the truth. Yuslih lakum a'malakum A person who is speaking in a straightforward manner with no distortion, it will direct one to righteous good deeds. So good speech, inviting to Allah, inviting to the greatness of Allah, striving in the path of Allah and speaking about the greatness of Allah, that is a means of guiding one. Malana Yusuf Ramallah used to say that any sifat which you want to inculcate in your lives, usku bas sifat e tabligh karo. Do it with the quality of tabligh. Malana Tani Ramallah used to say, any weakness I see in myself, I speak about that. Many ayat of the Quran wa musaddiqa lima bayna yadayhi min at-tawrah wa hudaw wa maw'idhatan lil muttaqeen It is a maw'idha, it is a lesson. Fajalnaha nakalan lima bayna yadayha wa ma khalfaha wa maw'idhatan lil muttaqeen Hadha bayanun lil nas wa hudaw wa maw'idhatan lil muttaqeen It is a lesson, it is a bayan it is advice, it is guidance for the muttaqeen. وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ آيَاتٍ مُبَيِّنَاتٍ That these ayat have been revealed and it is مَوْعِظَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى وَهَارُونَ الْفُرْقَانِ We have given them the furqan in a light. وَذِكْرًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ A reminder. وَإِنَّهُ لَتَذْكِرَةٌ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ for those that have taqwa, it is a means of guidance. So inviting with taqwa to utilize the tongue, to speak, to invite towards goodness and deen and Allah. They say there was a jamaat returning from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The flight was full. This person got upgraded to business class and he said he knew the hikmah and wisdom why Allah decided that. But he's seen all youngsters who are making jokes and laughing and loud voices. The air was filled, atmosphere was filled with music and the plane was quite full so he could not change his seat. So he tried to sleep but it was not possible. So then he got fed up with the noise, he took out the Quran and he started to make tilawat of Quran silently. So everybody sat down in their places and obviously the journey had started some of them got to the screens, some of them fell asleep. But the one that was next to him said, enough, enough. So he thought so that I disturbed him and it was too loud, so I apologized to him and I started reading silently. Then he was holding his head in his hands and he was fidgeting and moving and restless. Then he again raised his head and said, angrily, please stop it, I can't stand it anymore. Then he got up, he went away. So I thought, so now I was reading silently, what am I doing that's perturbing him more? He came back, he greeted me with salam and he apologized. Then after a while he had tears in his eyes and he said to this person, for many years or more I've not put my head onto the ground in sajda. I have not even read one ayah of the Quran. For an entire month I was on the strip and there wasn't a single evil action that I had not perpetrated. I engaged myself in every form of guna. As a group we went on holiday 
and not once did we even speak about Allah. Then we boarded the flight, we were going back home. I seen you reading the Quran. And I turned back the pages of history. The blackness which was in my heart, I realized it and I went in a, 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 a frenzy. I felt like I was being strangled and I felt every eye like it was a whoop beating me on my body. So I told myself how long will this ghaflat and negligence continue? Where will this path lead you to? What will this foolishness and play in la yani take you to? And what would be my condition when I depart? For akhirat, what would I die with iman? So I went to the bathroom in the tears and remorse and I needed to cry. And I remembered the words of my grandfather, لا تخزني يوم يبعثون Don't disgrace me on the day of Qiyama. But when he told me that I was a youngster, it never affected me, my life didn't change. So this person gave him dawat and gave him targheeb towards making tawbah etc. So when the plane landed, then he had a very serious note on his face and he asked him that will Allah accept my tawbah and my repentance? So I told him if you are sincere and serious, Allah will definitely forgive your sins inshaAllah. So we are returning to the markas, why don't you join us? Uh, we've got two more days left. So he said I've done so much evil and terrible things. I'm not worthy of your company. So I quoted him the ayat, لا تقنتو من رحمة الله Don't ever lose hope of the mercy of Allah. Allah forgives sins no matter what it is. Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. So I see him very, I seen him, he was overjoyed, happy. He's, he was in tears still. His friends uh, were shocked to see him. But as they were departing, everybody took their route and went. And he joined us. So it was two days only. So in the day he used to fast. At night he shouldn't sleep. He surpassed the entire Jamaat in activities and deeds and good actions. And uh, he never gave anyone an opportunity to supersede him in good deeds. Even up to washing the dishes. Whenever I spoke to him, gave him dawah, he should break into tears. He should say, I need to make my relation amend my make amends, I need to mend my ways with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at the end of the second day, it was time up, he thanked us, he was grateful. And we made some tartib and system that every time we will leave in a path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will take him with. And he said, don't ever forget to contact me. He gave us his numbers. And then uh, as he was leaving, he said, those were his words, if you ever see me in the line of the people of Jahannam, then make sure to intercede on my behalf. So he left and uh, we escorted him out and we seen a limousine to pick him up. So we were surprised with this grand reception. He did not tell us that he was part of the royal family. He was for part of the royal family. And he passed those two days, we were so ignorant about his status but uh, in the evening we got some news and we got a call and uh, we were told that he was in a motor vehicle accident on his way back home and he had become shaheed he was on his way back home and he had become shaheed so the entire jamaat was devastated they could not believe it what had happened and uh, the Janaza day came and the Jamaat was also in great remorse but great elation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala utilized them for the servant of Allah. And after the burial, the father called them home and he broke into tears and uh, he inquired from them about what were the last moments of his son's life and he was also baffled that Allah took him in this condition. His friends also that were there also made a near they will go out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they also started joining the Jamaat and Allah gave them Hidayat as well. So inviting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such an amal that yuslih lakum a'malakum. It is a means 
for a person's rare formation. The amal for today is that a person should give their zakat. If a person gives their zakat, the Sahabi asks, Nabi alayhi salam told him, Man adda zakat mali faqad dhahaba anhu sharruhu. You've removed the evil. Hassinu amwalakum biz zakat. Safeguard your wealth through zakat. Wa dao amradakum biz sadaqa. And cure your sick people through sadaqa. Wa staqbalu amwajal bala bid dua wa tadaru. Respond to the waves of calamity through supplication and beseeching. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.